Hello, my name is Eskimo Joe, and this is a tutorial on how to dodge a blue shell in Mario Kart Double Dash on GameCube. In this video, I'll be going frame by frame to show you all the different steps to dodging the blue shell, and I'll also be using the in game timer in the top right hand corner to show you exactly how much time you have between all the steps. Blue shells are quite random, and you can get fast ones, you can get slow ones. Slow ones are a little easier to dodge, but you have to be a bit more patient. Fast ones are virtually impossible to dodge because there's no frame indication on when you have to release the mini turbo. So it's a bit of a guess, really. In this video, though, this is a normal speed blue shell. This is what you most commonly see. So I'm going to skip on a little bit here to the first point in which you get a warning that a blue shell is arriving. And that's here. In the bottom middle of the screen, you see a faint blue shell. This is a warning to show you it's on its way. At this point, there's not much to worry about, but you have to use the sound in order to determine how far away it is. If the sound is loud, it's probably quite close by or traveling fast. If the sound is faint or disappears slightly, then it's much further away and you have more time to release a few mini turbos before ultimately charging one up with a dodge. Now I'll carry on a little bit here to here. As you can see the blue shell is a uh, warning at the bottom there. It's quite bold. If you have a nice long bit of straight that's wide and you can hold a mini tur uh, you can hold a drift for a long time, then you can charge up your mini turbo now ready to dodge. If the track's quite thin and windy, though, uh, you, you you can you have a bit more time before you have to ultimately charge up your mini turbo. The more time you have to prepare, the better. But it's important that you don't lose your lines. So we we'll go on now to the first point in which you see the blue shell. This is. That's here. At this point, you don't have to worry, but you know that the blue shell is about to come. Ultimately, from this point onwards, you have about three quarters of a second before you have to release a mini turbo. So, be so depending on how quickly you can load up your mini turbo, is how quick, how much time you have from here on. If you can load up a mini turbo within half a second, then you have a quarter of a second to spare. At this, on this example, I was actually in the air, and I'm about to land. Whilst I was in the air, I was able to charge up a mini turbo. So, which means that when I land, I'll instantly have a blue flame. So I already have a mini turbo loaded up at this point. I don't have a straight track ahead, which means I do have to hold right. Uh, sorry, I do have to hold left, round the drifting around the corner here. Ultimately. It doesn't matter which way you're drifting, just whatever suits you best. So we carry on one tenth of a second, and you'll see the blue shell will start to rise above the character's head. We carry on a little bit more here, and right on the next frame, oh, I skipped it there, but the frame before that was the last chance you actually see the blue shell before it lines itself up towards you. At this point you're down to half a second before you have to before you have to release your mini turbo. So if it takes you half a second to load up your mini turbo, now is the time to start drifting and loading it up when it shoots up in the air and you can no longer see it. Now if we skip on a quarter of a second here, the blue shell will start to appear from below and it will start to line itself up. Right here, the blue shell is now lined up, lined up, ready to go. You're now a quarter of a second away from when you have to release your mini turbo. You can just about see underneath the blue shell there that I have a blue flame, a very small one coming off my tyres. That's fine because I needed that loaded up. Now, we're going to carry on a tiny, tiny bit more.
right there. This frame is where the blue shell starts to shoot backwards. As you can see, it's blurred because it's traveling that fast at this point. This is where you really want to prepare yourself to release the mini turbo. You have four frames from this point onwards to release your mini turbo. Ideally, you've got one frame to do it, but depending on the speed of the blue shell, you can sometimes have two or three frames to do it. Now I'm going to carry on three frames here. One frame there. Two frames there. Three frames there. This is the frame before you release your mini turbo. This is where your inputs are very, very important. This is where I'll demonstrate on the controller. At this point, I'm holding down A, traveling. I'm holding down R to drift. And I'm holding left. This is my way around the corner. At this point, this is where I release the mini turbo. I need to completely let go of the control stick so it's in a totally neutral position. Once I know it's in a neutral position, I can then release the R trigger. So, I am holding R and I'm holding left. It's on this frame here that I did let go of the control stick and then let go of R. Make sure the controller is in a s neutral position there. You don't want to be holding left. You don't want to be holding slightly left. You need it to be totally straight. This is what falls the blue shell as it, you, you mini turbo in a slightly different direction. Now, I might hit full screen here, but I'm going to hopefully skip one frame. This frame here is where I release the mini turbo. And you will see on the next flame, next frame even, the flame coming out of the barrel train. This is when my controller is in totally neutral position and I've now let go of R. As you can see, there's a flame coming out of the mini out of the cannon at the top of the barrel train and the blue shell is traveling at full velocity towards me. Now, this is make or break. This is when you decide, when you find out when, if you pass your blue shell. If we carry on a quarter of a second here. Right here, the blue shell has passed me. At this point onwards, you will no longer get hit by the blue shell, no matter what your inputs are. At this point, I can now hold down A, like I have been the whole time. I can now start to turn left as I need to here, because it's a left hand turning. If you're going straight, you can just carry on with the control stick being in a straight position. It doesn't really matter. But in this point, I started to now turn left. I haven't quite, didn't want to quite initiate a t drift yet, because I'm not, I'm still at full speed at 69 miles per hour. And once the blue shell has passed here, I have three tenths of a second until I stop at 69 miles per hour. And it's here. I now am no longer at top speed and the flame is about to disappear out of the front of the cannon. Now, I can carry on a bit more, but I, this is ultimately the most important part. As you can see, the blue shell on the right hand side is just about off camera when uh, I stop from 69 miles per hour. This means from the point in which I release the mini turbo to the point where I no longer am at top speed is half a second. So you can sort of get your timing right in practice. Now I'm going to carry on half a second because in half a second's time
at the bottom there, you'll see another blue shell warning. This is nothing to worry about. It's not a blue shell coming again. You have successfully dodged this one. You can forget about that warning. This warning stays up for another half a second and then disappears. This is, you now have three tenths of a second before the explosion of the blue shell happens. Right there. That's the blue shell exploding. This is important because on tracks where the blue shell has gone in front of you, it can still create a big explosion of blue fire. Now, it can be very salty when you dodge your blue shell and you hit the aftermath of the explosion. On this example, the blue shell explosion was behind me and to the right, so I had nothing to worry about here. But there have been times where you can dodge the blue shell blue shell explodes in front of you and you can still hit the aftermath. So it's still not quite over yet. This lasts for a tenth of a second till there, but the blue shell explosion does last a bit longer. Ultimately, that's everything with a blue shell dodge. The best way to practice is actually by going to two player mode and before you do that, go to options and set the weapons to frantic. This way you can use the second controller to shoot blue shells at your own character and you can practice the blue shell dodges and all your timings. I hope this video has helped you. Please do not hesitate to leave a comment if you have absolutely any questions. I will answer them all, I promise. Please like and share this video as well because this is a skill that anybody can master. If you like this video please subscribe because I only uh, upload good content to YouTube. And if you're curious, you can watch this live at Twitch at EskimoJoe365. Good luck with your blue shell dodges, guys.